the International Mathematical Olympiad, or IMO. It's one of the most prestigious math competitions in the world, and it's been held every year except for 1980, going all the way back to 1959. And what better place to start than with the very first IMO competition? It was held in Romania, and the first problem was suggested by Poland. It asks us to prove that 21n plus 4 over 14n plus 3 is an irreducible fraction for every natural number n. Oh, coffee's ready. Coffee Time Math with your host, Wrath of Math. There's nothing I'd rather be doing right now than solving this problem with you. Let's do it. So, we've got this expression, 21n plus 4 over 14n plus 3, n is a natural number. We want to prove that this fraction is irreducible. Now, of course, a very important part of solving any problem is knowing uh, what you're actually trying to do. What are you trying to accomplish? What does the end goal look like? In this case, the end goal is showing that this is irreducible. So what does that mean mathematically? Well, it means that the numerator and denominator of this fraction have no common factor greater than one. That's what it means for the fraction to be irreducible or fully simplified or in lowest terms. Because if the numerator and denominator did have a common factor greater than 1, then we could cancel out that common factor from the numerator and denominator, thus reducing the fraction. It would give us an equal fraction, but with a smaller numerator and denominator. So we want to prove that we can't have that. We've got no common factor greater than 1 between the numerator and denominator. How are we going to do that? Well, in this case, I think the easiest path to take, there are of course a number of ways, but I think the easiest one is a proof by contradiction. You know how that goes. For a proof by contradiction, we suppose the opposite of what we're trying to prove. Then we show that leads to a contradiction, thus it must, it must be the case that what we want to prove was true all along, because we show that if it wasn't true, we'd get a contradiction, can't have that, and that's how a proof by contradiction works. So we'll suppose the opposite opposite of what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove this fraction is irreducible, that the numerator and denominator have no common factor greater than 1. So to begin our contradiction proof, we'll suppose for contradiction, which I abbreviate SFC, that these, uh, that the numerator and denominator do have a common factor greater than 1. So here's what we say, suppose for contradiction that d, some integer greater than 1, is a factor of 21n plus 4 and 14n plus 3. So we're supposing there's this common factor greater than 1, and again, since we're calling it a factor, that means it's an integer. When we're talking about factors, we're talking about integers, so d is an integer. Okay, so in order to show that this force is a contradiction, of course, we've got to get to some false mathematical statement. So what are some mathematical statements that we could make right now? We know that d is a factor of this and d is a factor of that. So that means, for example, if we divide 14n plus 3 by d, there will be a remainder of 0 because d is a factor of 14n plus 3. If you're familiar with modular congruence, you know that means that 14n plus 3 is what we call congruent to 0 mod d. No worries if you haven't seen this sort of thing before. This is read 14n plus 3 is congruent to 0 mod d. It's called modular congruence. And again, it just means that if we divide 14n plus 3 by d, we get a remainder of 0. We know that's true because d is a factor of 14n plus 3. So we know the division's nice and clean and there's no remainder. Now, of course, the same thing is true with 21n plus 4. Since d is a factor of 21n plus 4, we know that 21n plus 4 is congruent to 0 mod d. If we divide 21n plus 4 by its factor d, we'll have a remainder of 0. 
Now remember, since we supposed the opposite of what we're trying to prove, we're trying to show that there's some contradiction here. So we're hoping that there's some kernel of falsehood in this pair of statements. Unfortunately, right now that might be getting sort of disguised by our variable n. n could take on any number of values, it's just some natural number. But maybe if we could find some way to get rid of the n terms in these equivalence relations, in these congruences, then we might be able to identify something that is certainly a contradiction. Just like with normal equations, we could combine these congruences to do what's called elimination, to get rid of the variable. But right now, in this case, if we combined these congruences, what would we get? Well, we would just get 14n plus 21n, which is 35n plus 7 is congruent to 0, and we still got the n, so that's not a big help. So what we would like to do is multiply this congruence by some number and this congruence by some number so that we can end up combining them so the n terms cancel out. In other words, we're trying to find a common multiple of 21n and 14n. What can we multiply this by and then what can we multiply this by so that the n terms are the same and we can use both congruences to eliminate the n. You'll see what I mean if you're not following what I'm saying in just a minute. There are of course some systematic methods we could use to find the least common multiple of 14n and 21n, but in this case it's pretty easy to find. If we double 21n, we would get 42n. And then if we multiply 14n by 3, we'd also get 42n. So that'll work just fine. What we'll do is multiply this whole uh, congruence by 3, and we'll multiply this whole congruence by 2. What's that going to give us? Well, here on the top, we'll get 3 times 14n plus 3. Remember, that's, that's what this writing kind of means. We're just multiplying this whole thing by 3. So if we multiply this whole thing by 3, we get 42n plus 9 is congruent to 0 times 3 is 0, mod d. And that should make sense, of course. If d is a factor of 14n plus 3, then d is also a factor of 3 times 14n plus 3. So we'll still have a remainder of 0 if we divide by d, so it's still congruent to 0, mod d. Same sort of thing down here. 2 times both sides of this congruence gives us Beautiful, 42n, just like we wanted, plus the 4 times 2, so that's plus 8, is congruent to 0 times 2, so congruent to 0, mod d. Now perhaps you see there's a problem. So now we've got that 42n plus 9 and 1 less than 42n plus 9, 42n plus 8, are both congruent to 0 mod d. That seems wrong, but let's just do a little bit more work to really isolate the contradiction that we see here. Now that we've got the same n terms in both congruences, we can combine them to eliminate the n. What we want to do is subtract this congruence from this one. So we'll just sort of write a negative here. If we multiply this whole congruence by negative 1, we would get negative 42n plus 8, and then negative 1 times 0 is just 0, so that doesn't change, and then we combine this with this. What do we get? We get 42n plus the negative 42n, which is just 0n, so we don't have to write that, and then we get the 9 plus the negative 8. That's 1. Here we have 0 plus 0, which is 0, so we have that 1 is congruent to 0 mod d. That means that d is a factor of 1, but that can't possibly be true because d is greater than 1. That is a contradiction. Once more, this is a contradiction because by definition of modular congruence, this statement means that 1 divided by d has a remainder of 0. So d divides 1. d is a factor of 1. That's impossible because d is greater than 1. Thus, it turns out that 21n plus 4 and 14n plus 3 can't possibly have any common factor greater than 1. We assumed that they did, we got a contradiction, so it can't be. So they do not have a common factor greater than 1, thus this fraction is irreducible. You're a rebel. Get in and that's it.
The end. Subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet.